Here I have a circuit that uses a push button to control the onboard LED on the Arduino, which we can find on digital pin 13 here. When the Arduino is powered up, the wire connected to the 5 volt pin allows current to flow through the connecting wires into the breadboard and then onto the first pin of the button. When the button is pressed down, a connection is made between the pins on the button and then the current flows back along the breadboard into the black connecting wire and onto digital pin number 2. When this happens, digital pin number 2 will read a high signal. When digital pin 2 reads a high signal, the Arduino sends another high signal to digital pin 13, turning the onboard LED on. I'll finish this circuit by connecting digital pin 13 to an external LED. And then I'll connect the cathode on the LED to ground. And now the circuit is complete. When I connect the Arduino to power via the USB cable, the circuit should begin to work and when I push the button, the LED should come on. So let's try that now. I'll connect the Arduino via the USB cable and current should start flowing through the circuit. Now I've connected power to the Arduino, you can see that the onboard LED on pin 13 and the external LED connected to pin 13 are both blinking on and off but I haven't pushed the button yet. When I push the button, both the onboard LED and the blue LED stop blinking and remain on just like they're supposed to. So my circuit should work. If I take my finger off the button, we can see both LEDs start blinking again. This error is caused by something called the floating pin problem. So what is a floating pin? The floating pin problem is caused by digital pin number 2, here, where the black wire connects from the breadboard to the Arduino. When the button is not pressed, digital pin number 2 isn't actually connected to anything. This means the pin is free to pick up on any nearby electrical interference. This electrical interference will cause the pin to read high and low signals randomly, causing the LED to turn on and off. We can fix this use something called pull-up and pull-down resistors. By using a pull-up or pull-down resistor, we create a constant connection to digital pin 2. This basically gives any unstable voltage on this pin somewhere to go. The resistor pulls away the unstable voltage, hence the word pull in the name. A pull-down resistor connects the pin to ground, so the pin will read a constant low signal when the button is not pushed, and this will make the LED remain off. A pull-up resistor will connect the pin to the 5 volt power supply, so the pin will receive a constant high signal when the button is not pushed, and the LED will then stay on. To add a pull-down resistor to this circuit, I'll connect pin 2 to a resistor and then I'll connect the resistor to the negative rail on the breadboard. From there I'll connect the negative rail to the ground pin on the Arduino. So I'll start by adding a resistor to the breadboard and I'll connect this resistor to the negative rail. Now I'll connect that negative rail to the ground pin on the Arduino. And now the LED has turned off because digital pin 2 is receiving a constant low signal. Any unstable voltage on pin 2 will travel back along this wire, along the breadboard, into the resistor, up the negative rail and then along this wire onto ground. Now if I push the button, the LED comes on as the current flows from the 5 volt pin through the circuit the way it's supposed to. Digital pin 2 receives a high signal, that sends a high signal to digital pin 13, and the LEDs switch on. When I take my thumb off the button, 
the LED turns off. So very simply, this pull down resistor is allowing any unstable voltage to travel away from digital pin two and then just run through the circuit to ground here. Adding a pull up resistor allows digital pin two to read a constant high signal. We do this by connecting digital pin two to the five volt power supply using a resistor. This constant connection means that the 5 volt pin will always send a high signal to digital pin 2 unless the button is pushed. So I'll add this pull up resistor now. To do this I need to remove the pull down resistor from earlier and you can see the LED has started blinking again and I'm going to remove this connecting wire to the positive side of the button there. So the button is no longer connected to the 5 volt pin. Now I will take the wire connecting digital pin 2 to the negative side of the button and I'll simply switch it from this side here to this side. This is the positive side of the button. And now I'll take that resistor and I'll put the resistor on the positive side of the button as well and I'll connect that to the positive rail on the breadboard, like so. So now you can see that digital pin 2 is connected via a resistor to the positive rail which is connected to the 5 volt pin. So now digital pin 2 is receiving that constant high signal. The last thing I need to do is take that extra connecting wire and I'll connect the negative side of the button again to ground here, like this. Now the circuit's finished. So you can see that the LED remains on while the button isn't pressed. So while the button's not pressed, digital pin 2 is connected to the 5 volt power supply. When I push the button down, the LED turns off because now the 5 volt power supply runs through the resistor, the current flows into the button, with the button down a connection is made, it runs through the button, into the red wire, onto the ground rail, through the green wire and into the ground connection here. So that leaves digital pin 2 receiving that constant low signal. If I take my finger off the button, digital pin 2 is again connected to the 5 volt power supply and it's receiving a constant high signal. So a pull-up resistor is useful if you need a component that has to remain in a high state and a pull-down resistor is useful if you need a component to remain in a constant low state.